Oh, it's a bit windy. Today I'm at um, one of my favourite coaching walks in South Wales, just north of Istrafelt. Um, Blind Hlai, Hlia, I think it's called. Um, that's the ridge line that we're going to be going up and then hanging a left, walking right the way along um, further past that. Um, uh, all the way around there and walking back down the road and back round here a um, little bit windy as you can see some of the, the trees etc moving however behind me up here is a Roman or the remains of a Roman fort so part of the walk that we're going to be doing is we'll be coming back down on a Roman road and the Roman road sort of um, goes behind this tree line here into the fort and then back out again um, towards my left so just waiting for my coachy to arrive and we'll crack on talk to you later so you can see on the map um, we're at this car park here and that's the Roman camp or the remains of the Roman camp that I pointed out essentially we're going to walk up and along come back down this is part of the Roman road hit it and then walk back down this road here um, really really nice walk a little bit blustery on the top of the ridge line but it'll be really pleasant and blow the cobwebs away um, allow my coaches to have a bit more of the whoops just hold that map a bit more um, get that clarity of thought about being in the open air um, and there's absolutely no mechanical no man-made sounds at all apart from my voice at the minute there's a stream at the bottom of this little valley here and that's it um, really looking forward to this i love being in this part of the world so more videos as we walk along talk to you later so you just see the cars come over the bridge and what you do is turn left there's fiona and basically follow the path turn right straight up the ridge line and keep walking till you get to the top it is the worst part of this walk um, because of the tracks it gets a lot worse than this by the way um, it's just awkward on the feet that's all so it's a little bit about being careful if you use walking poles bring your walking poles but you don't really need them so we'll catch you later when we're at the top bye now just come up that path so you're following the uh, the wall the dry stone wall to the right hand side and I mentioned about the Roman fort you can just see there's the camera there that's the rim that's the remains of the Roman fort up there so the Roman road goes away over to my left or the camera left as you're looking at it and it comes in from that side as well from the camera right and what we're going to do is continue walking all the way up to that ridge line over the stile hang a left and enjoy hopefully the views although we might get some low clouds so we might not see anything map and compass always carry one So you just see on the bottom third we're walking towards a cairn that is clearly marked on the map not really sure what the height is I'll check it when we're up there um, I think it's less than 700 meters um, one of the things about walking in places like this is knowing where you are all the time so you've got maps with you you've got app, um, mapping applications on your phone if you use electronic devices make sure you've got spare battery capacity that you carry in your rucksack with the right cables 
the clouds are coming from the east across to the west and every now and again it covers the cairn so again if you're in the clouds you're either following a recognized path or you stop and you take a compass bearing and every hundred meters you check that you're on the right compass bearing and you just keep going a little bit scary but with a tiny little bit of knowledge you're much better prepared to do things like this by yourself and it improves self-resilience self-reliance your mental health and if I just stop here, and apart from my breathing, all you can hear is the wind. Perfect silence. Love it. So I've got to the cairn, and I've taken the um, gimbal off because of the wind. Well, look at that. That is one of the best views you can have in South Wales. Well done, V. Rocking it. Taking it off the gimbal because of the wind. It's a bit windy. And we're following, we just see the path. We know exactly where we are on the map, we know exactly where we are on the mapping application. And in a few hundred metres, we're going to be hanging a little slightly left and starting to slowly go downhill. Again, fantastic view. That way, you can actually see uh, Mr. Belt Reservoir if you're lucky. That's pretty much directly behind us towards the cairn that we've just come from. And back round again. And you can see how, how misty it is if you want to give us a thumbs up. still a bit windy just the view over there and we're going to be turning left very soon just at the bottom of this little dip turn left down the side hit the Roman road and then turn right just pan around for the view it did get a little bit clearer and then the cloud cover came in but we're just sort of going underneath the clouds now there's Fiona walking off in the distance well happy. So excuse the bimbling jumpy bits but the gimbal just would not work in this wind. So we're heading now down towards the Roman road um, and there is just in the distance, the medium distance, probably short really, about 200 metres, um, fence line and that's essentially where the Roman road is. We take a left from there and carry on all the way through the valley, back to the car park.
road that we've walked up. That's the ridge line that we walked along. Drop down. This is actually the Roman road. Let's turn round now. And that's the road that we're following. A bit disappointed in the Romans, to be honest. This road is a little bit pathetic when it comes to road building. And um, considering that we are in Wales, and most of this road seems to be coming either downhill or uphill, depending on which way that you're walking, with the amount of water that you get in Wales, it turns into a stream. So all in all, a bit disappointed in the Romans in Wales, really. This is still the Roman road. Although Roman stream might be a bit better. So that's where we've come from. And there's Fiona, she's walking down now towards the road. This Roman road joins the main road. And this walk, we're gonna continue on the main road to the left and it takes us straight back to the car park. So this is the main road we've just joined and I'm just going to go back and believe it or not that's the sign at the head of the Roman road that we've just walked up. Um, I'm not really surprised it's closed. The Romans don't seem to have done a really good job and it's flooded. Well done whichever council that we're in. Anyway, you can just about see in the distance the car park and there's Fiona walking down the road now. So once again, due to the wind, I'm not using the gimbal, so it's a little bit hard for me to keep the camera nice and steady and straight. This is just by the side of the road, um, and it's a monument to a stone that we're going to just walk down next. It's not too far from here, it's a little bit closer. That ridge line behind is the ridge line that I was walking today with Fiona. Um, and you might just be able to see just behind the stone, a stone wall. That's the Roman road that we walked up. So really windy, a little bit boggy here. But this is one hell of an impressive stone. Oh God, it's very boggy. Um, Good grief. I'm just going to go really up close to it and just turn round just to try and measure and that's probably 12 foot. So this stone is about 12 foot high, possibly 15 foot high at its highest, just stuck out here in the middle of nowhere and you really have to look at that and think, why? Pretty much the same way as you're thinking about Stonehenge. Why did somebody put it there? Absolutely amazing. Love it. So, there we go. 